While we may be seeing Austin Butler living in the epic Graceland in the Elvis movie right now, in reality, he's a California boy born and raised. These days, he's moved out of the lavish mansion he shared with ex-girlfriend Vanessa Hudgens, but it's likely only a matter of time before he treats himself to a nice bachelor pad. Also, Michael and I dropped our very own house tour of our new home we moved into this year. So go ahead and subscribe to our family channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. All and once you watch, let me know what you think of our home. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Austin Butler is an American actor whose name you might not have heard all that often up to this point, outside of his relationship with ex-girlfriend Vanessa Hudgens. But now that he's so amazingly brought back to life Elvis Presley and Baz Luhrmann's recent biopic, my guess is we're about to hear a whole lot more about him in the near future. So what better time to investigate his home life and take a look at the mansion he used to share with his former flame. These two began their love affair in 2011 when they both had far fewer credits to their names. Over the following years, Austin stuck by Vanessa as her star continued to grow while he booked gigs and ultimately failed TV series like The Carrie Diaries as well as The Shannara Chronicles. Then in 2018, these two decided to take the next step in their relationship by going in together on a mansion in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Los Feliz for just under $5 million. A few months later, Austin booked the role of Elvis, something that Vanessa was super excited about at the time it happened. But as much as these two wanted to play house with one another as the king himself would croon, only a year later they went their separate ways, with Austin being the first to move out. And while Austin might not have had the opportunity to spend all that much time in this jaw-dropping property, I thought I'd give you guys a taste of his former home. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, this time looking at the homes of Austin Butler. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. And now let's get into this video. The home that Austin and Vanessa shared was first built in the early 1920s in a Georgian colonial style as a gift for the silent screen actress Julia Fay, the mistress of the legendary film director Cecil B. DeMille, who conveniently enough lived nearby in the neighborhood of Lowland Park. That's how the home earned its original nickname of the Little DeMille. After Cecile and Julia passed on, the home came to be known. After Cecile and Julia passed on, the home came to be owned by an executive in the 80s before then moving on to act. Gary Oldman, who purchased the home in 2011 for around $2.9 million. Gary would live here for a handful of years, and the biggest contribution he made to the place was the installation of 18th century French oak floors, which he installed throughout. Then in late 2018, along came Austin and Vanessa, looking to share their first home together. They met up with Gary, and in an off-market deal, secured themselves this historical mansion for an estimated $5 million, almost doubling what Gary had originally paid. When asked what a attracted the couple to this home in the first place, Vanessa told Architectural Digest that a lot of it had to do with its history. She said, I wanted an old home. To me, there is something so romantic about that. A home with character and quirks. I love the old Hollywood elements, the Art Deco air vents, the chandelier over the staircase, the yard that feels like a park. In fact, the couple had spent five years searching for the perfect place before they finally found it. So why don't we dive into everything that it has to offer and check out this former couple's one-time dream home. Situated on a double-wide lot that's surrounded by mature trees for an added dose of privacy, this home boasts a weaved patterned brick walkway and a donut shape. It also wraps around a two-tiered fountain and approaches the front door, which is set into a shallow arched portico. While the exterior is a bit boxy, it's also completely covered in pretty manicured vines. This was actually the first thing that struck Vanessa about the place when she saw it. Recalling that moment, she tell Architectural Digest, Walking through the gate and seeing this house covered in ivy, surrounded by olive trees, it was like I had been transported to France or Italy. It felt like such an escape. And as impressive as that is, it's even nicer on the inside. Sure, it may only be a modest 3,168 
8 square feet, but with three bedrooms and four bathrooms. It's got everything you need and then some. There's even an additional guest house located just above the detached two-car garage. Inside the main home, however, things are pretty grand. Once you step foot into the front foyer, you'll see wooden floors Gary Oldman had installed, white moldings, and a tray ceiling that shimmers with metallic leaping. This excitement carries into an ample living room that stretches the entire depth of the house and includes a wood-burning fireplace flanked by some built-in bookshelves. Meanwhile, towards the back of the room are a series of French doors on two separate walls that almost touch the ceiling and provide access to the yard. Soon after moving into the home, Austin and Vanessa originally planned on going with an all-white monochromatic color scheme in the living room, even purchasing a massive white linen sofa. However, when the couch arrived, they quickly realized it didn't quite work and they switched to a much different vibe when Vanessa found a pink sofa at a vintage store. A short walk from there is a charming swinging door that separates the kitchen from the formal dining room that boasts wooden tables and chairs. The kitchen started off as an upscale countryside culinary space with rough wooden beams stretched across the ceiling and white shaker style cabinets topped with gray veined white marble. During the recent pandemic, this spa got a facelift. Some leftover tile from the primary bathroom was turned into a backsplash and the countertops were replaced with Carrera marble. Some of the cabinets were also removed while the ones that remained were repainted and big oak beams were installed to provide open shelving. There's also a breakfast nook where they added 1950s style pendant lights imported from Germany and a luxe leather banquet booth that was inspired by the restaurant Maison Premier in New York City. Up on the second floor, there are two guest bedrooms with a Jack and Jill style bathroom, but the star of this floor is definitely the master suite. Austin's former bedroom stuck with the original vibe by keeping its initial fixtures and hardware like glass doorknobs. But once these two moved in, other original elements of this suite would soon change. An interior designer was brought in to cultivate what was called a cave vibe for this intimate space, especially after Vanessa became obsessed with the idea of sitting in a deep ceramic bathtub. In order to achieve the desired effect, the bathroom had to be moved and a few walls were knocked down in the process. Then a ceramic egg shaped tub designed by Native Trails was brought in and it was mission accomplished. Finally, let's take a look at the backyard. Walking out those French doors in the living room, you'll discover a blue stone terrace that steps down to a lengthy and swimmer friendly pool. Past that is a vine draped pergola structure that hides an above ground hot tub. There's also a grassy lawn with large open spaces and a rectangular koi pond. Austin and Vanessa then added their own personal touch by bringing in an artist to paint a mural of faces on the wall surrounding the pool, while also installing a long table so that they could host al fresco dinners with produce from their own garden. If only those good times could have lasted. As mentioned earlier during the majority of their relationship, Vanessa was most definitely the busier of the two. But once Austin landed the part of Elvis, things changed and these two began to see much less of one another. As any of us who've ever been through it know, long distance can put a lot of strain on a relationship, and that's what happened here. After owning this home for a little over a year, Austin and Vanessa split, and by all appearances, it was Austin who was the first to leave. Vanessa would continue to live here for another two years and even invite Architectural Digest in for a tour. But then, just six months after showing the place off, she decided to sell it to Ronan Farrow and his longtime partner, John Lovett, for six $6.7 million, almost $2 million more than she and Austin originally spent. As for Austin, it's not entirely clear at this point where he moved next, but considering he spent two years bringing Elvis to life, a film that was often delayed due to the pandemic, he was likely renting a home in Queensland, Australia, where the entire thing was shot. Of course, now that filming is over, I'm sure he'll be looking for a new place to stay, and when we find out where that is, we'll update you accordingly. As for the end of his longtime relationship with Vanessa, when asked to comment on his breakup by GQ, he told them, Life is full of changes and you've got to find a way to constantly be evolving and growing. All right, everyone, that's going to bring this latest tour to a close. Let me know what you thought about Austin Butler's former home in the comments below. Otherwise, go ahead and check out recent house tours and stars like Drew Barrymore and Lucy Liu. Or if you want to check out Graceland itself, watch our Elvis one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'll see you all in another video. Bye!